Hi there. For today's ninja art tip, I, it's a continuation of what we were talking about yesterday, is um, delaying putting the detail in as long as you possibly can. So it's really important to get the basic shapes right before you start going ahead and doing the little incy beansy bits of detail in anything, whether it's a drawing, a painting, anything. Get the basic shapes right. So this also applies for sculpture. If you are sculpting in clay or any other form, you need to get the basic underlying shapes correct first before you go and fiddle around with um, carving in the detail. If you get the basic shapes in the wrong places, uh, it's a nightmare if the detail's already been completed. But if you've got the basic shapes and you spot something that might be wrong, it's very easy to change it at that stage. So that's the big advantage in delaying the detail for as long as possible. So this also applies to when you're doing um, the trickiest form of drawing and painting, which is portraiture. And so I'll show you just an example of um, a sketch that I'm, I've got here. So we talked about just um, getting the basic shapes right. You, you can you do the idea of drawing with spines and circles and then put the um, detail of the shapes in afterwards. Or another way is to um, use squares, triangles, rectangles, any sort of blocky form that you can see, egg shapes, any underlying mass forms that you see underneath the object before you start putting the detail in. So with faces, this is actually uh, a sketch that I did in a two minute fast uh, drawing challenge that we did in our Drawing Faces Masterclass. So we set the timer for two minutes and we looked at our reference and we tried to get the drawing to um, as far as we could along uh, before the timer went off. So this is how far I got in two minutes. But you, when you're doing this sort of challenge, it's really important to get the underlying shapes right first. If you start getting fancy and going into the detail and you start putting in all the details for the eyes too soon, you'll end up with one detailed eye and then none of the rest of the drawing. So this is a really good um, method to follow when you're doing life drawing. If you're drawing from life and you've got a life model there and they're doing timed uh, setting, sittings, um, this is the process that you've got to follow. You've got to get the basic underlying shapes in right first before you start going into detail. So with the shape of the face, um, it's important to realise that there's an overall size of the head, which is, I mean, you could think of it as an egg shape. There's actually some straight sides that are sliced off the sides of the head. And um, then you have to be aware of these meridian lines, I call them. So there's a line that runs down, it's a symmetry line that runs down through the centre of the forehead, the centre of the part on the top of the head, through the nose, through the mouth, th halfway through the chin, and then it goes around the egg to the other side, from the, around the back of the head and then back to the front again. Then there's a, a line, it's kind of an equator line, that runs around where the eyes are. Then there's a, a line that runs around where the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the ears. Then there's a line for the mouth and so on. So you have to get all of those equator lines parallel around us. Think of it like a globe, um, like a map of the world type of thing. And if you block in these really simple shapes first, then you can just plonk the eyes on really quickly, block in the darks of the hair and just put some quick sketchy lines for where the, the nose and the mouth is. And in two minutes, you've got um, an image that looks like a face. I mean, it's obviously not finished, but you've got a reasonably accurate looking face in that short amount of time. So if you have a different sort of face that might be turning on its side, you can simplify it by looking at the overall. This was a, an image of a lady just looking off to the side. Um, and she had strong darks on her hair coming down here and then the, the shoulder line was down here. So another way is to just block the um, outline shapes, the really strongest lines that you see. Obviously her hair wasn't square, it was a very rounded shape, but if you simplify it back down, drawing a curve is tricky. So it's much simpler to just draw blocky, quick straight lines to see the, ang the vague angles of where those curves go and afterwards put in the curves. So this was a really um, quick way of getting the basic underlying form right before going into the detail of the face. So I knew exactly where the curve of the hair was going to go afterwards 
so I could actually work on this one um, afterwards because I've got these really simple lines in the correct positions before I start adding all the detail in. So remember that idea of delaying the detail for as long as you possibly can. It's a really important step in drawing all sorts of um, shapes and forms. Portraiture is one of the hardest ones to do, so it becomes really important to do it then. But for any sort of shape, whether you're drawing a tomato or a person or a landscape or a vase of flowers, anything, you've got to delay the detail for as long as possible and just get those basic shapes in correctly first. So please um, join us over at the um, dojo for um, more tips and tricks and um, subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can see every single one of these videos. And please also um, like, share, comment, tell me what you think. Tell me if you've had any issues with this in your drawing or painting in the past. Have you had to back backtrack? I have. In a major portrait job that I did, I had to backtrack a long way and repaint um, a big portion of an oil painting because I got the underlying shapes wrong. Um, so it's something that I will never forget and um, it makes me really attuned to the idea of making sure I get those underlying shapes right from the beginning. So that's your tip of the day. Um, take it or leave it. Hope you like that idea and see if you can implement it in your drawing and painting or even sculpting and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.